So here is another example. This is a different area on the property. You can see through the woods there, there's a ladder stand in a tree. This is the property line. This is the neighbors. This is this property. Here is a ladder stand in a tree, obviously over the property line. I spray painted that wrong orange and I put that little note there. <laughs> it says, next time it's mine. Uh All right, we're out here in the woods. We've got a camera up there. And that solar panel isn't working. My battery's going dead. So I'm gonna ascend. I've got a rope set. And we're gonna get up there and swap out the solar panel and we'll, we'll figure out what's wrong with that later. We're gonna tie a running bowline And we'll come around with the Yosemite finish. Dress that up. And we can set that. I'm out here alone, so there's no real reason for a, a rescue. We'll wrap this around the trunk a little bit for some added friction. This is gonna be my ascent line up here. I'm on a fairly small branch that may actually break and or slightly bend and lower me into another crotch. So I can't fall to the ground. But I may I may drop a little bit. But I've added some friction around the tree to reduce that potential and put my gloves on here and i've got to tie on my little bag of tricks here i've got a, a second solar panel and some other stuff you gotta get around this dead branch here Let's get my stuff around that branch so I can hang. This is also a good test of my camera to see if it recorded my activity below with the truck and get my line set. It should have recorded me. It's actually a cellular camera. So it transmits pictures cellularly and I can take my phone and open up an app and look, look at the pictures. Let me get up here. This is a red oak, northern red oak. Oh, I didn't even break that branch. Northern red oak kind of flexible when it's green. So, the lanyard on. There's a camera up there. Got a little shroud over it. I gotta cut off a little bit of that shroud as well. Try to make it to give me a little more peripheral vision. Okay. Now for the benefit of my 
friends in Guatemala, I'm gonna set a rig. I've got a Petzo Avao Bod harness. It's a full body harness. It's got a it's got a chest attachment. I am going to experiment with a uh, a clevis in this attachment point here and run a from from this point to the point on the other leg and run a bridge so I can run a bridge on here and I'll probably put a since potentially the manufacturer wouldn't authorize this a bridge to be solely on here we can put another tether to this d-ring so as your your attachment point runs on the bridge it's always got a second attachment point so i mean one problem in in this industry with these new bridges is sometimes the bridge fails maybe somebody runs on their bridge too long sometimes they use a maybe a really strong uh like dyneema core rope uh double braided rope as a bridge but those fibers get uh, fractured over time as your friction is running on that bridge and and you know, they get a bridge failure and and so having a, a second tether just on your bridge just gives you a little more peace of mind so the rig the pretzel rig you can see this one is affectionately used I had I ran on a rig for a long time so I know the ins and outs about them. To, to set the rope, you take your down line, goes in the, as you're looking at it, as it's orientated, you go in the top and come under the cam and then close the top over it. And it has a positive lock, locking snap right there. And ordinarily, this is belayed right over this, this spot here. Um, I, I used it a lot. Uh, and so I, I ran it one-handed. I would flip the rope over like this So instead of blaying over here, I'd come across here like this and then I Could belay with these two fingers So I could run this one-handed I could descend and I could belay this with two fingers I don't know make sure my camera angles right So it ordinarily belays like this you can do it two-handed and you belay with one hand but oftentimes when you're work positioning, you want one hand out in front of you. Or if I'm jumping to another place and I want this to run, but I want to be able to catch myself with my other hand, I can flip this around and run two fingers on the handle and two fingers on the belay. And it's very effective. So anyways, that's a little, little hint on the rig. I'm gonna get up here by this camera. So the purpose, purpose of this camera is for poaching control. <laughs> right over there is the property line, right at those trees. We got a cornfield down here. And right at the edge of that clearing over there, there's a tree stand right over the line. Now he's kind of got some trees there, but he's, he's come across the line and he's cut stuff off of those small trees over there. Now anybody that knows hunting knows that means he's creating shooting lanes into this field, which is not his field. So the homeowner here uh, wants to capture his activity on a video. And so this very wide angle lens here captures this whole field. I may even I've pruned this hickory a little bit, but my peripheral vision actually goes out there. So I might might cut another limb off that hickory uh, just to get better peripheral vision. I've got to cut some corners off of my got to cut some corners off of here. But for some reason, my my solar panel is not working. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this out. get my lanyard on higher so that I get a better so I want this tree leans one direction so I want 
gravity wants to pull me out in front of the camera. I'm going to put my lanyard on as a secondary point, and then I can adjust that. Now I have the, the rig holding me and my lanyard holding me. And now I'm very comfortably placed in this tree to be able to work on these two things. So I also have a bracket uh, to go on the bottom of this camera here to hold this in. I, uh, you know, if all else fails, read the instructions and I read them last. So that was my problem. My little bag of tricks up here. We're gonna, I'll unplug this. I'm just gonna bring this solar panel home. I brought my little Emerson knife along. As you pull it out of your pocket, you can, you can deploy it right away. That's pretty cool. Uh, so it's not a switchblade, but it basically acts like one. All right. All right, so the mistake I made on the first one is this is attached at the factory and they warn you not to pull it out. Of course, before I read that in the instructions, what did Kevin do? I pulled it out. So I'm pretty sure my troubleshooting is gonna have to do with that connection. But here, like this. And as you tighten this, then it becomes fixed so I can point it at the sun. And we're going to winter here, so I'm gonna keep it fairly vertical because you know our sun angle right now is probably coming right in the camera. But of course it's gonna be lower in the sky later in the year. Oh. Okay. All right. So I can look at the pictures. Now I'm connecting. So the name of this camera is Agilon. That's the name of the property. And sure enough, it took some pictures of me. At 12 o'clock, 11.59, 11.57, there's my truck. I don't know if you can read this. So it's connecting. All right. It's recording me. This. So it's connecting. All right. It's recording me. This. About a five second delay. So it's connecting. All right. It's recording me. On in my eyes here, but I'll show you uh, this descent technique. Now, usually I have gloves on. Otherwise, you burn your fingers. This is how you do it. And with gloves on, you can uh, you can descend pretty fast with this, like this. Oh, lost my bag. Or you just descend with your your belay hand. But with gloves on, you can belay like this. Don't do it with your bare hands. <laughs> it doesn't treat you very friendly. So here is another example. This is a different area on the property. You can see through the woods there, there's a ladder stand in a tree. This is the property line. This is the neighbors. This is this property. Here is a ladder stand in a tree, obviously over the property line. I spray painted that rung orange and I put that little note there. <laughs> it says 
next time it's mine. Uh, he hasn't come yet, unless he's savvy enough to leave the note there. But maybe I'll put a camera up here. I mean, obviously, whoever's sitting there is hunting that area. And this guy is hunting this area. This field is, you know, the property that I help out with. You know, there's 180 acres over there. And they got to hunt the line. I don't get that. 180 acres, and they got to hunt the line. I tell you, it's just a testament to human nature. <laughs> you just never have enough. It's crazy. But that's what we're dealing with. So I don't get to take it today because the note's still there. If that note's ever gone and the stand is still there, it's mine. All right, well, today the Game of Trees was was uh, doing a little anti-hunting. <laughs> I'm not personally anti-hunting, but my client is. And so uh, we're helping them out by placing some cameras and, and doing some property line checks. And if we have to, we'll extract some tree stands, uh, which requires climbing. So uh, it is officially part of the Game of Trees. So hope you liked the video, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.